He is known for coming from a humble farming family in Stockbridge, Vermont. He is recognized for being raised in the strict environment of Calvinist Congregationalism. His name is Orestes Brownson. Orestes Brownson, a man whose life was shaped by hardship and intellectual curiosity, was born in Stockbridge, Vermont, in 1803. As the son of farmer Sylvester Augustus Brownson and Relief Metcalf, Orestes experienced loss at a young age when his father passed away. Struggling to provide for her son, Relief made the difficult decision to place Orestes into the care of a nearby adoptive family. Under their watchful eyes, he was raised in the strict teachings of Calvinist Congregationalism on a modest farm in Royalton, Vermont. Despite the limitations imposed upon him, Orestes's thirst for knowledge was insatiable. Though his formal education was mere fragments of what others received, he found solace in the written word. Engaging with literary works such as Homer, Locke, and the Bible, Brownson delved into the profound depths of philosophy and literature. It was in these dusty volumes that he discovered a world beyond the boundaries of his upbringing, a world that challenged the strict confines of his religious doctrine. Fueled by his intellectual pursuits, Brownson's journey would take an unexpected turn when, at the age of 14, he briefly attended an academy in New York. This was to be the extent of his formal education, but little did he know that the flames of knowledge and philosophical inquiry had already been ignited within him. This young man, shaped by his humble beginnings and an unquenchable thirst for learning, would go on to become a significant figure in American intellectual history. Orestes Brownson, a prominent philosopher and theologian of the 19th century, embarked on a remarkable journey in search of religious truth. Born in 1803, Brownson experienced a profound spiritual transformation that led him to question the beliefs of the Presbyterian Church in which he was baptized. He found their doctrines of predestination and eternal sin too harsh and their exclusivity limiting. Dissatisfied with Presbyterianism, Brownson ventured into teaching and eventually applied to become a Universalist preacher. He saw Universalism as a more liberal form of Christianity, one that offered a different perspective on faith. In his role as editor of the Gospel Advocate and Impartial Investigator, a Universalist journal, Brownson voiced his own religious doubts and critiqued organized religions and mystical beliefs. However, Brownson's journey did not end with Universalism. He later distanced himself from the movement and aligned himself with Robert Dale Owen and Fanny Wright in New York City, supporting the Working Men's Party. He briefly served as the editor of the Genesee Republican in Batavia, New York, in 1830 before moving to Ithaca, New York. In Ithaca, Brownson became the pastor of a Unitarian community and began publishing a magazine called The Philanthropist. This phase of his life marked another important shift in his religious exploration. Brownson's philosophy displayed a deep-seated questioning of traditional religious beliefs and an inclination towards more progressive and inclusive ideas. Orestes Brownson, a prominent figure in the Transcendentalist movement, found solace and inspiration in the philosophy of Transcendentalism after the passing of the philanthropist in 1832. As he settled in Walpole, New Hampshire, he immersed himself in English Romanticism and studied the works of German idealist philosophers through English and French reports. Brownson's enthusiasm for the teachings of Victor Cousin and Pierre Leroux propelled him to become one of the founders of the Transcendental Club in 1836. Seeking to establish a haven for his beliefs, Brownson made the move to Chelsea, Massachusetts, where he established a church known as, the Society for Christian Union and Progress. It was during this time that he published his first book, New Views of Christianity, Society, and the Church. Through this work, Brownson merged his transcendentalist religious perspectives with radical social egalitarianism, vigorously critiquing the unjust distribution of wealth as incompatible with Christian values. In 1838, Brownson embarked on a new endeavor by founding the Boston Quarterly Review. As its editor and primary contributor, he molded the publication into a platform for political, intellectual, and religious discourse. Notable figures such as George Bancroft, Margaret Fuller, George Ripley, and Elizabeth Peabody also contributed to the review. Brownson's essays covered various topics, including a favorable review of Thomas Carlyle's Chartism, which he separately published as The Laboring Classes. While Brownson's writings garnered praise from some, they also stirred controversy. His review of Carlyle's work, which espoused socialist ideas, was blamed by some for the defeat of his favorite candidate, President Martin Van Buren, in the 1840 election against William Henry Harrison. Consequently, Brownson's work faced backlash, with Van Buren himself attributing his loss to the socialist ideas propagated in the Boston Quarterly Review. In 1840, Brownson published his semi-autobiographical book, Charles Elwood, or, The Infidel Converted. Through the protagonist, Elwood, he criticized organized religion and challenged the infallibility of the Bible. 
The following years saw Brownson merging the Boston Quarterly Review with the United States Magazine and Democratic Review, ending the separate publication of his revered literary platform. Orestes Brownson's journey through transcendentalism and his dedication to promoting egalitarian ideals left an indelible mark on American intellectual history. His writings continue to inspire contemporary thinkers as we strive to navigate an ever-changing world, offering us a renewed perspective on our own lives and the society we inhabit. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.